All right, in this video, we're going to look at goal M.2.1 in the ATIT study manual. And we're going to look at some charts, some tables, and some graphs. And we have two examples to cover. And actually, this chart here, I just need to copy that right on over to our document so we can talk about it a little bit more. But you have various ways data can be displayed. For, here, for example, here we got like bar graphs. And then over here, we have the table that actually gives us this information. So this is a way a table can be displayed. And then you have a type of bar graph. Well, if we look at this example, it says five friends are completing their taxes and are discussing the number of items they donated this past year to local donation centers. The chart below shows the number of items each person donated to various places. So we have John, Sally, Mike, Lisa, and Amber. And if we look at this first, and I'm gonna come back to the Excel file in a second, but notice it says the number of items donated times five. Boom, do not overlook that. So whereas when you see John, you see four items are donated to Goodwill, two items are donated to Salvation Army, and seven items are donated to the church, that is not correct, because it's actually four times five. That means he donated, notice it says times five. So John actually donated 20, 20 items to Goodwill. Uh, he also donated, what, 10 to the Salvation Army, and he donated 7 times 5, so that's 35 to the church. We want to be careful when we're answering some of these questions like that. Other things to note, too, hopefully you do see that the way these numbers are lined up, the 4, the 2, and the 7, that's exactly what we have here, 4, 2, and 7 based on this table. So you want to be familiar with reading your, you know, your columns of your chart or your table versus the rows of your table and that's how we can form this little bar graph here. So let's answer some questions. It says Amber donated one item to the Salvation Army this past year. Well if we go to Amber, I'm gonna look over here at this one since it's a little bit clearer, and if we look at Salvation Army we have over here a one but notice actually that's one times five so that's definitely false. She did not donate one item to the Salvation Army she donated five items to the Salvation Army. So false. She donated five items to the Salvation Army. Alright, let's look at some more. Lisa says she donated the most items this past year. Lisa, well, here's what we're going to have to do for this one. We're going to have to actually go to each person and figure out how many items they donated. Well, what we can do is this. Even though it's times five, watch this. John, if we look at John, and if I add up the four plus two plus seven, I'm not multiplying by five yet. Since each, since each one of these is going to be multiplied by five, let's just take four plus two plus seven. Well, four plus two is six. Six plus seven is 13. So really, John did not donate 13 items. He donated 13 times five, which is 65 items. All right. Let's move on along to Sally. So what's Sally equal to? Sally did five plus four. That's nine. Nine plus six. That's going to be 15. So she donated 15 times five, which is going to be 75 items. Moving on along, what about Mike? Now, of course, you can use this one over here as well, but I'm just going to keep the Excel file open. Hopefully, you can read this okay. So Mike is 1 plus 2, that's 3. 3 plus 5, that's 8. So 8 times 5 is equal to 40 items. Let's come on down. Let me see here. You can make a little bit more room. All right, so coming back. Oh, what the heck. There we go. Who do we have next? Lisa, she did, you can add all these up. We have 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Hmm, that's already telling me right there that she did not donate the most because 14 times five, that's gonna be what, 70 items? Well, don't we already have somebody who donated more than Lisa? Yeah, Sally did. Sally donated 75 items. And even though we multiplied all of these by five, because I want to make it very important that you need to read the axes on your charts, on these graphs that you have, really all we had to do was look at the 13, the 15 that we have here, the 8, the 14. And I didn't even go over to Amber, but I'm going to go ahead and go over to Amber anyway since we're talking about this. Let's go ahead and figure out how many Amber had. Amber, let's add hers up. So she's got 8. 9, 10, 11, 12, so 12 times 5 equals 60 items. 
So Lisa did not donate the most. Um, actually, Sally did because Sally donated 75 items. But again, all you really had to look at was the 13, the 15, uh, the 14, the 12, and the 8. And as you can see, Sally does have more. I hope that makes sense. Now let's move on down and answer this last one. Sally's average number of donations this past year between the three donation centers was 25 items. So let's look at Sally. Let's figure out how many Sally donated, which we've already said. We said it was 15, so she donated 75 items. And if we go back and look at Sally one more time, um, I just took 5 plus 4 plus 6. So 5 plus 4 is 9 plus 6. That gives us the 15. Well, 15 times 5 is 75. The way we find the average is we take that 75 and we divide it by 3. And what is 75 divided by 3? That is 25 items. So therefore, that answer is correct because on average, even though she donated, you know, look at Sally here. She donated 25 items to the Goodwill. She only donated 20 items to the Salvation Army. And she donated 30 items to the church. If you average those out, which is what we did, we added up the total number of items she donated and we divided by three because there's three donation centers. That does average to give us the 25 items. So therefore, the answer to number three is definitely going to be true. Whereas the answer that we got up here is definitely going to be false because we did discuss that Sally did donate more items than Lisa did. So that's one example. And let's look at the second example here. And this is going to be the miles walked. So Seth teaches at a local college. He has started tracking the miles he walks in a day while he is at work. And let's just say he's using, um, using a Fitbit, whatever. He's using like a little watch on his hand. He's monitoring the number of miles he walks while he's at work. So let's answer the questions below. How many miles does Seth walk from 8 a.m., the time he gets to work, to 5 p.m., the time he gets in his car to go home? Well, notice that's exactly what this table is showing, 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., and this keeps a tally of the total number of miles. So this 1.5, this is a cumulative thing. It, like 0.2 miles, yeah, that's how far he walked from 8 to 9. From 9 to 10, he did not walk 0.4 miles. The, the watch, the Fitbit, is going to show how many miles he's walked in all. So from 9 to 10, he actually only walked an additional 0.2 miles. But by 10 p.m., the total number of miles he has walked is 0.4 miles. You have to be careful with that there. This is the total miles he walked while working. So the answer to this question here is going to be how many miles did he walk from the time he got to work uh, until the time he got into his car. That's going to be that 1.5 miles. So 1.5 miles. The Fitbit. He's not resetting this thing every hour. The Fitbit's going to stay on and it's going to keep tracking his mileage from eight to five. So this thing, it can never go down over the course of a day. <laughs> Just because he walks backwards, which I doubt he's going to be doing at work, people would think he's crazy. But there can be times when he is still. And think about this. That. Think about that. This next question. Is there a time or times when Seth does not walk any distance over the course of an hour? Well, if we look at, let's look at 10 to 11. Notice at 10 o'clock, if we look at our table, he had walked 0.4 miles by 10 o'clock that morning. Well, 11 o'clock rolls around, that distance had not changed. Maybe he was sitting in a meeting for an entire hour. So yes, there are some times his distance did not change from 10 to 11, nor did it change from 12 to 1. So maybe he was eating lunch during this time. He was sitting at his desk or whatever, eating lunch. So it gives you some things to think about. You know, why did his distance not change? Meetings, lunch, whatever. If he's just sitting at his desk, he's not walking. So yes, there are definitely some times. Uh, what do we say from 10 to 11? a.m. and 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock p.m. And then the last question here, over what hour does Seth cover the greatest distance? What we're looking for here is you can look at your table if you have a table or you might have to look at a graph. And I'm going to talk about looking at the graph. If you look from 1 to 2 o'clock, this is when we have our steepest increase, our greatest increase in distance. And let's look at our table anyway. At 1 o'clock, he had walked 0.4 miles, or excuse me, 0.5 miles by 1 o'clock in the afternoon. Then look at this. At 2 o'clock, he was at 0.9 miles. So from here to here, he walked 0.4 miles. You just find the difference between them. 
And if you look and if you were to subtract these two, that's 0.2. Subtract these two, that's 0.2. That means from 9 to 10, he walked 0.2 miles. What about from 4 to 5? From 4 o'clock to 5 o'clock, he walked 0.3 miles because the difference between these two right here is 0.3. The greatest difference is from 1 o'clock to 2 o'clock. So that's the one we're after. And again, it's really about you looking at the graph because you may not have a table like this. And noticing that's the steepest line that we have. That one's pretty steep as well, but if you look, that one is steeper. And these things should be drawn to scale. That's one of the most important pieces about creating graphs and bar charts and things like that. You want everything scaled correctly. That way we can you can see these types of trends that we're talking about here. And, uh, you know, yeah, there you have it. That's two examples. we got a bar graph and we have a line graph. There are other ones that you may run across in your book. If you have some questions, leave a comment below or make a request over at my website, idomath.weebly.com. And that's it for this video. I hope it helped.